Welcome to Social Studies Samurai. In this video, we'll look at IB History Paper 1 and how to answer the second question. We'll use question 10 from Move to Global War as a sample for practice at the end. Let's get started. All right, IB History Paper 1. This is how to answer the second question. It applies to all topics in paper one for IB history, but we will use question 10 from Move to Global War for a practice at the end. So in the video, we will talk about the kind of source you're gonna see, uh, an unofficial mark scheme, we'll get to that later, what OPCVL means, we'll talk about how to respond, give you tips, things to do, not to do, and as always, a practice at the end. So the kind of source you're gonna see is always a narrative extract. It's a small piece of text from a larger piece of text. And basically, it's testing your ability to analyze the values and the limitations of the source to the historian. And it's worth four points. And it could be an extract from like a book, a magazine, a letter, a diary, journal, piece of legislation, or whatever, at least on the IB exams. So for the second question on paper one, there is no official mark band or mark scheme. You get that for the third and fourth questions, but this is one that might give you kind of a, a bit of help. Let's not talk about zero. Uh, one to two points, it means you have kind of a basic limited examination of the origin, purpose, and content, and the values and limitations, or perhaps you're lacking a balance. You do need values and limitations in your response to score better. You want to have explicit, developed examination of the origin, purpose, and content, and the values, and the limitations. We'll get to that a little bit later. So the origin. Basically, this is found in the description of the source, not the source. So what type of source is it? Is it a speech? Is it a, a diary, um, a journal entry, memoranda, a piece of legislation? That kind of thing. Who created it? said it, wrote it, drew it, recorded it, whatever. So is it an historian, a politician? Was it a journalist? You know, that kind of thing. It could be a range of different people. Who, when was it made? Was it contemporaneous, meaning it happened at or around the time? Or was it after the event? Or was it shortly after the event or long after the event? And where was it made? This matters too. Uh, the location could mean, you know, it might be biased. It could be there's an assumed perspective from where it was made. Possibly, um, you know, the country, the publishing company, or who put it out there, the government, this matters too. The purpose. This can be derived or taken from the description of the source, but it can also come from the content depending on the tone. Was it intended to inform, right? Is it a book uh, intended for scholarship? Uh, was it an article explaining an event that happened? Something like that. The government saying like, hey everyone, this is a new law. Was it intended to disinform? So might facts have been altered or excluded or perhaps uh, ordered in a certain way or worded in a certain way to give a different kind of um, uh, perception of what happened? Was it to persuade? Um, were you, was this piece of work intended to get people to support an idea or a perspective? Did it try to connect with a specific audience. That could be a social class, it could be an ethnic group, it could, it could be all the citizens of an entire country. The content. Basically, this is the text part or the image part of a source, or maybe it's got text and image. It is not the origin and it is not the purpose. It is what's in the actual source. Keep that in mind, please. It can indicate many things, the content that is. It could give the author's point of view, it could be evidence of an event, it could be the interpretation of an event. And it can be many different things, like a speech, a letter, a memoir, a law, that kind of thing. Now the tone though, is it exaggerated? Is it objective? Does it seem like it's taking a side or does it seem like it's just saying, this is what happened? The values, this is the fun part. Basically, the values in a source would be the usefulness it is to the historian to try to figure out what happened, right? So is it relevant or is it helpful in trying to find out the truth? So you have to identify what historians might be able to learn or at least infer from the source. So is the creator an authority on the topic? That's the origin. Uh, are they an, uh, an expert historian in that particular field of history? Is it an eyewitness account? Somebody was there and they said, I was there, this is what I saw. 
Is the author trying to address a specific audience? That would be the purpose. Is there one perspective or more than one perspective offered? That could be content and it could be purpose as well. How do or uh, what do we learn about an event? Is there something we learn? That would be content. Do we learn about the circumstances of, of an event? That is content as well. Are there statistics, uh, stats, numbers, things like that? They do you know, provide content and help us understand a little bit more. Is there hindsight for the historian? Was it written decades after when there might have been more information available? These are all important. The limitations, the fun keeps going. Um, the limitations are things that limit the historian's understanding of an event or a person or a perspective or maybe an interpretation. They are things that the historian should be uh, wary of, maybe even suspicious of. So what you have to do is identify the weaknesses. Is the creator not an, author uh, an authority on the topic, right? Um, I just wrote a book, but I'm not an historian on the topic. Was there a possible motive for making the source? That could be, you know, the origin, the purpose. Is it propaganda? That could be origin and purpose as well. The government made this uh, to convince the people to follow it. Was the author expressing a specific perspective without giving other perspectives? That could be purpose as well. Was it produced to incite a response from the audience? We want to get these people fired up. We want them to go do this. That could be purpose. Is it an incomplete uh, piece of work with details missing, like uh, an extract from a source that, where things are deliberately omitted? We'll talk about being careful of saying it's an extract later on. Is it subjective? Uh, does it lack objectivity? It's very emotional. It's just saying, oh, this is it. You know, it's more of an opinion. Does it have a tone that's very exaggerated or negative or maybe even too positive? So as you respond, you'll want to keep these things in mind. First, origin, purpose, and content can all have values and limitations. You will want to examine the origin, right, in the description of the source, and infer the purpose from the kind of source it is and the content within the source. Now, I always recommend to my students to find two values, and I recommend to find two limitations. So what's the value and why? Explain. What's the limitation and why? Right? Explain. Now, honestly, you, uh, you really only need three, so you might not want to waste your time doing four. I feel it's safer to do two and two, but the important thing is you need a balance. You do need at least one value and two limitations or two values and one limitation. Talk to your teacher and, and go with what they say for, uh, you know, to you and what they recommend. Use relevant terminology, okay? Stay academic. Uh, write in the past tense. Um, don't say, you know, they were saying blah, 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 or they says, be careful of how you write. And if you're going to use bias, explain it clearly why it might be biased. You can't just say a source is biased because. I'll talk about that later. So this is a possible response structure that you could follow. Uh, the origin, you want to give a thorough description of who made it, uh, what it is, when it was made, and where it was made. Um, you don't have to write, you know, word for word like a long title of a book. Keep that in mind. The purpose, you have to give a reasonable, reasonable explanation of why it was made and the intended audience, right? Who, who were they writing this or making this for? With the values, you want to identify an origin or purpose or content plus a value and why it's a value. Give it that explanation. And same thing for the limitations. Identify a limitation in the origin, purpose, or the content and say it's a limitation and give your explanation. Here's some response structure starters for you or sentence stems, if you will. The origin of source I is, the purpose of the content was probably, a value of the purpose is, a value of the content is, a limitation of the origin is, a limitation of the content is. Note that I'm saying a value of the what, a limitation of the what. Be very, very explicit. That will help the examiner show uh, that you know what you're talking about. So you might want to pause the video and quickly look at the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six, and where I've signposted what I'm talking about, the origin, the purpose, first value, second value, uh, first limitation and second limitation. Just quickly, you know, kind of read through that structure. So tips, 
include, as always, review your history notes, review an origin purpose values and limitations chart or a values and limitations table or both. I will put those in the description so you can see them in a Google Doc. Understand the question first, always do that. Identify the points you might want to make. Try to make time to underline, highlight, circle, whatever in the source booklet so when you go to write, you can just quickly make reference and, and get on with it. Use the prompt terminology. Show the examiner that you're using you know, the words from the, uh, you know, the source and the question. Find two values, two limitations. That's my recommendation, but to save time, your teacher might say just three and have a balance between values and limitations. Uh, talk to your teacher. Uh, they'll, they'll give you the advice they believe you should have. Have a balance between origin, purpose, and content, and write in about 10 minutes, even faster if you can. Here are things to be careful of. Be careful if you explain bias as a limitation. You better give a good explanation because most sources could be biased. And, and the source you're going to use is always an extract as a limitation, so you better give good detail as to why it is. I recommend against using extract as a limitation. Don't rewrite the question. You waste time. Don't write a topic sentence. You waste time. Don't write lengthy details. You waste time. Don't repeat a value or a limitation because you won't get credit for it, and you waste time. Don't write slang or colloquialisms. Don't give background knowledge because you won't get credit for it. Don't write your opinions and do not speculate. All of these things either waste your time or will lose points for you. So in a moment, I'll show you the source and the question. You go ahead and pause the video, write a response, ideally in 10 minutes or less. And then I'll go through my explanation of how you could approach the question. So here is the source and the question. Go ahead and pause, write an answer, and then we'll go through it. So here is a, a response that I've crafted. Note it's got two paragraphs. Pause the video and then see how I've done this. Okay, so note here I've broken this into two parts. Uh, the first part, it's got the origin, purpose, and values. And the second has limitations. I've done that just to be very clear uh, to the examiner. Now in the green, note that I've got the origin of the source, the purpose, a value of the origin, a value of the content, a limitation of the origin, a limitation of the content. I'm signposting. I've let the examiner know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the origin or the purpose, a value of the origin, a value of the content, a limitation of the origin, a limitation of the content. It's called signposting. And notice in the wine, I'm being pretty specific, right? Uh, the blue, uh, you know, that adds to my description, right? So note that I'm signposting and I'm providing specific detail as well as explanation. Why is it a value? Why is it a limitation? All right, so that's how you can answer the second question on IB History Paper 1. And we used question 10 from the move to global war as our practice. Remember, prepare, review, you're going to be just fine. Hope you liked the video. There's more on Instagram, Facebook, X, and on the web. Hope to see you again.